with that, I am going to introduce myself. I am Gwen Peterson, founder of Spiritual Communities Network. And we are, I believe this is our fourth World Wellness Weekend event where we are celebrating that global event with our little contribution here on Zoom and bringing to you some great topics regarding wellness. And this time we're trying something really new. We have some MCs that will be talking with you in between our speakers and we're introducing, oh, I'm getting goosebumps. I think Spirit's all excited about the lounge. <laughs> we have a lounge, which is um, for those who are familiar with breakout rooms. What that means is when we're on intermission, we'll pop over, everybody will pop over except the MCs to the lounge and we'll be able to unmute there and we can do Q&A with the speakers. We can have friendly conversation amongst ourselves and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So this is pretty much the only time you're going to see me because I'm going to be the one doing all the IT stuff in the background. Um, I'll check back in later in the day, probably towards the end. But I'm going to leave you in very capable hands with Peggy, Raphael, and Sarah Sparks. So with that, I hand it off to Peggy. Peggy, take it away, my dear. All right. Thank you, Gwen. What a great job you do with Spiritual Communities Network. It's awesome for Be Well in Paradise to be part of this. So I'm Peggy Sealfon. I'm founder of the Paradise Coast Wellness Alliance, out of which has grown our nonprofit, Be Well in Paradise. And it's really a joy today to be able to share with you uh, all of these great speakers and to be able to be part of World Wellness Weekend, uh, which is being celebrated right now in over 133 countries. So we are part of something much greater than ourselves, which is pretty exciting. And it's really um, a joy for me personally to be part of this. Part of Be Well in Paradise is really focused on not only creating inspiring activities that align mind, body, heart, and spirit throughout our Paradise Coast, our Southwest Florida area, but it's also about really uh, encouraging mental wellness and we have a mental wellness scholarship fund. So it's really an exciting day to have all the speakers that we have. And I'm really privileged to be with such great MCs, Sarah and Raphael. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass it over to Sarah so we can move closer towards our speakers. Sarah, you've got the talking stick. Hello, loves. I'm Sarah Sparks. I'm a highly sought after spiritual business mentor who guides entrepreneurs to amplify, align, and activate the soul of their business. I also have the honor of representing Spiritual Communities Network. As you know, Gwen Peterson is the founder of Spiritual Communities Network. Over the past 10 years, thousands have used Spiritual Communities Network uh, to explore their spirituality and what it truly means uh, to them, that, that spiritual connection. Uh, our members offer a wide range of spiritual classes, events, and services to guide you and others along your path. So if you're look, looking for your peeps, you may have found them here. <laughs> uh, Raphael. So good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Wen, Peggy, Sarah, and thank you to all of you for being here today. So my name is Rafael Camp, and I represent the Blue Zones Project here in Southwest Florida. And I'm not uh, completely sure everyone knows. I know some people knows about the Blue Zones Project. Uh, we're basically a well-being initiative. It's completely free for that community. And what we're trying to do is to change little by little our uh, surroundings to make the healthy choice easier for everyone. So that's pretty much what the Blue Zones Project do, and that's what uh, part of my job is here in the, in the community. Uh, I'm gonna be today translating into Spanish a little bit of what we talked here today, summarizing a little bit, just to uh, make sure that everyone, or at least the Spanish speaking community can also have a little bit of what we're doing and sharing here today. So um, you'll be listening to me speak in Spanish a little bit, uh, and that's, because we wanna to try to share everything after we do it, we're recording this. Uh, we wanna share it with uh, all the people in the community that doesn't speak English. So thank you again. So next up, 
we are going to be listening to being hmm, raising our frequency with Denise Flood. She is um, going to really dive into what is frequency and how to use it. What is the buzz all about frequency? Why should you even tune in? We're going to go through some basic or uh, not basic, practical, simple techniques to dive into the subject and nourish your body, your whole body wellness. Denise Flood has over 30 years of experience learning and teaching energy work. She is the creator of a self-care program, Change Your Frequency, Change Your Life, that incorporates techniques like EFT, tapping, meditation, prayer work, pure essential oils, and sound and breath work to bring clients greater vitality and joy of living. As a spiritual uh, recording artist, I just love that about her, she appears on several compilation meditation CDs and has a new soul uh, solo CD release called The Keys Volume 2, Meditation and Messages for Life's Most Challenging Times. Matt is now available on Amazon, so you'll have to check that out. She is an expert at heart. At, 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 she is an Oh my goodness. She is an expert at, at a heart centered self care techniques that will inspire and uplift. I'm just so excited for you to change your frequency and change your life through her wonderful vibration. So, welcome, Denise. Thank you so much, Sarah. And what a pleasure, can I say, to be a part of this day knowing that these good vibrations are going all around the world. And if the world ever needed to know what frequency is and how we can use it for our own benefit and the benefit of our homes, our communities, and the greater world, this is the time. This is the time to tune in and tune up. So what is frequency? The simplest definition is that it is a measurement of an energy wave. And we all know what that can kind of look like. I always picture in my mind, if you're familiar with the old Disney Mickey Mouse symphony, where they play the instruments and you see these beautiful colored light waves of energy from the simple plucking of a string. And it can be dissonant or it can be in harmony. And what we want to learn to do is find that within ourselves, find that vibration that makes us feel harmonious within and add that to the conversation of vibration in the world. And that's what we're going to do a little bit of here today. So when we talk about vibration, just think about it. You know the difference between walking into a room where there has just been an argument and you feel like, oh, a little bit of pushback or walking into a, a child's second birthday party where it is just squeals and giggles and how fabulous that feels and just the difference, tuning into both those feelings. What feels better? What would you rather share with the world? I would rather share squeals and giggles personally. So what I wanted to try to do with you today is to find a moment to go within and ask ourselves to be given a sound. And so I'm just going to set that up for a moment right here where I'm going to ask us all if you're comfortable putting your hands together, however you are. Some people like to do this. Some people like to do this. You can simply do this, but we're going to take a couple breaths and just quiet our mind in for maybe seven and out for 10. In again for about seven. And out for about 10. And remember, this is about you. So I'd like you to adjust your breathing that the rhythm suits you. And if my words don't resonate with you, please know 
you can change them because this is about you and your experience. And so again, breathing in and breathing out and going right into where your heart center is and just ask yourself, if I had a frequency, a sound, what would it be? What would it sound like? Would it be a note? Do you hear a little song? Whatever it is, know that it's perfect for this moment for you. Allow that frequency, that vibration that makes you feel grounded and strong and joyful. Add those in together to this. And just allow that to vibrate in your heart and see it expanding up, up through your throat, your head, up to the universe and see it coming back down, coming back in through your head to your heart and feel those notes vibrate down through your being down through your feet, anchoring you into the earth as the divine presence that you are created to be here. Know that this vibration is where you are at your strongest, where you are grounding in every good thing about you. and allow it to flow out through your arms and your hands. And bring your hands back together, if you may, around your heart area, feeling that vibration, anchoring it in, staying connected above, below, and within, and come and be present with me here as we share a little more dialogue. As we feel this feeling, I'm going to give you a few techniques to stay grounded in that when perhaps life comes along and wants to kick you off a little bit, off of this magnificent abundance of love and joy and bliss. And what I use, what I use is to come back to the sound, one very quick way to tune in. Another quick way to tune in is I do tapping. And that can be as simple as taking your hand over your breastbone and just tapping gently. And remembering the sound and whatever is going on, whether it's news you heard, something triggered when you scroll through and you didn't necessarily scroll on by, but you absorbed a little bit of that energy. And you just want to say, I come back to me. I come back to my divinity. I come back to being whole in body, mind, and spirit. And this is ever so important to continually tune in and tune up throughout the day, because if there has ever been a year and a half that life has thrown us hither and thither, here and there, it has been this year. And other wonderful things that I use to facilitate this, and you can see behind me, is essential oils. I happen to be diffusing here, and I'll tell you what I'm diffusing and why. Uh, I am diffusing sandalwood and rose oil. And I'm diffusing these because sandalwood to me, and you may have a particular tree oil that is more grounding to you, perhaps a pine or an evergreen, but tree oils help us to stay grounded, but they also have 
that energy from those branches that reach up to the sky. And essential oils are the life force uh, and the immune system of those plants, those trees. And when we use these, we give that to ourselves, whether it is um, through breathing, which is a fabulous way to do it because it goes right into our olfactory system and affects the back of our brain. The back of our fight and flight affects our memories and it affects our thinking. Essential oils are one of the rare things that can cross the blood brain barrier. And they are so helpful in helping you gather yourself back up, whether it is from emotional overload, stress, physical pain, um, and, and just strengthening your immune system in general. Because when we stay in alignment, our immune system is strengthened and these things help us. So I chose the sandalwood because to me, it's a very warm, woodsy, grounding. It grows in a warm area. And I just like to think of that sun and that warmth and those roots in the ground. And then the rose. Rose is one of the most precious oils there are. It is the oil of unconditional love, which is why I'm diffusing it today so that it can be transferred through my thoughts through my words to each one of you and to wherever this reaches out into the universe. Because I strongly believe that what we create within ourselves, staying in that vibration, we start to admit and radiate it within our homes. And we hold that energy. If you just think of that beautiful energy you created and you hold that and you fill your entire home up with that, Feel that joy, feel that tingle. And then just push it out a little bit more. Make your bubble a little bit bigger, your effect on the world a little bit grander and send it into your community, especially if you know places in your community that could use a little extra love, a little extra tenderness. And just see that spreading out. I like to always think of it as going from my home to my community, to my state, because I live in the United States, um, to my country, and then around the world, because this truly is Global Wellness Day. And this is a gift we can not only give ourselves to stand in this energy, but send it rippling out. We've all heard of that butterfly effect. That is exactly what this is is using our energy to create these beautiful ripples of light and love around the world. I think that we have a little bit more time um, because I, I do want to play uh, a recalibration DNA meditation that happens to be on the CD that um, Sarah had mentioned, uh, meditations and messages for life's most challenging times. And it really came out during COVID, which I thought the could, spirit couldn't have been more perfect, that these are the kind of things that we need on there. Um, you can listen to them free on YouTube, but I can't guarantee that the commercials will be to your liking, which is why if you would like the sanctity of enjoying and really measuring out your meditations and um, staying immersed in it after it's over, um, to bless me by, by purchasing it on, on Amazon. Um, so frequency matters, and this is what we're going to do. I am going to try to share my sound now, and I'm going to look for a thumbs up from one of my lovely cohorts here, making sure that you can hear this. Welcome to this very special meditation and aligning your DNA. I invite you to sit or lie down in a comfortable position as we begin. Sound is 528 hertz. It 
is known as the miracle frequency. hope that that was of value to you and that it brought you to a place 
where you feel peace and a, a loving vibrancy within. Some of the other things that I do to stay in this place or to come back to this place is to pay attention to what I feed myself. And I don't just mean the foods we feed ourselves. Yes, it is important to eat vibrant, healthy foods, but also what are we feeding ourselves when we are watching television or scrolling through social media? Join groups that uplift you and that serve you in maintaining your health, your well being, body, mind, and spirit. Just like Spiritual Communities Network has many classes and offerings, Be Well in Paradise has joined together with them and they add so much to our community and the Blue Zone, as you heard, bringing vibrancy to all of us. When we all come together and we collaborate on wellness, this is such a great service to ourselves as individuals and to our communities. I really, really thank you for tuning in. I know that you are going to totally enjoy the rest of the evening. And I'm going to invite you on over to the lounge um, where you can do Q&A with me or we can just have great conversation. And namaste, I see the good and the God in you. And I hope that you recognize that with me. Denise, that was absolutely magnificent. You cannot give to others what isn't flowing through you. And it really starts by centering yourself, bringing that mind-body connection. I do want to mention we are live streaming on Facebook. So for those Facebook watchers, if you do want to jump on to the Q&A in the private lounge, you can still register. There's a link on the Facebook page. And Denise is going to join you over there as Sarah, Raphael, and myself will stay in the main room and we're going to share some other information with you. And in fact, Raphael is gonna do a little bit of a translation in Spanish, but I do before we jump into that Raphael and go into the summarization, um, I do want to just mention our fabulous sponsors. Uh, one is Cecilia Compatori with the Essential Toolbox and she's actually going to be our next speaker all about essential oils and it's gonna be a great talk. And then also coach Caroline, Caroline Thonin. And during this presentation break, or break between presentations, we're going to share a little more information about our sponsors as well as just some conversation and dialogue amongst ourselves that hopefully those of you on Facebook will find interesting and want to be part of. So Raphael, are you ready to do a summary for our Facebook listeners? I am, I am. Thank you, uh, Denise, for what you just shared. It was really nice. So now I'm going to speak in Spanish for a little moment. And um, muchas gracias, Denise. Uh, Denise básicamente tiene más de 30 años de experiencia en el aprendizaje y la enseñanza del trabajo energético. Es la creadora de un programa de cuidado personal. Cambia tu frecuencia y cambia tu vida. Eh, Denise básicamente nos explica cómo todos tenemos una cierta energía, un cierto nivel de vibración con el que nosotros podemos estar mejor o peor. Lo importante es darnos cuenta de cuál es esa energía en la que nosotros vibramos que nos hace sentir mejor. Denise también habla de distintas técnicas para llegar a ese punto de sintonía energética. Habla de el tapping, eh, que creo que no tiene traducción al español, es tapping. Eh, y habla también pues, de cómo con la meditación, la respiración, los aceites esenciales y algunas frecuencias sonoras podemos nosotros centrarnos y obtener ese nivel de satisfacción, placer que nos producen todas estas técnicas. Eh, otra cosa que Denise nos comparte es la posibilidad o lo que nosotros todos este, tratamos de compartir con, con, con las personas es alimentarse correctamente, llenarte de energías positivas, conectar con personas que son personas que están de alguna manera en una sintonía de alegría, de positividad. Eso también lo que vemos en televisión 
Eso es muy importante y eso también define de alguna manera cómo nos sentimos y cómo proyectamos nuestra energía. So that's a little summarized in Spanish. That was incredibly impressive, Rafael, and I hope that we have a lot of followers on Facebook that appreciate that and can really be able to share in even more uh, tuned in. You know, when when your uh, original language is different from what you're being presented, it resonates differently. It, as Denise was talking, it's really frequencies, vibrations, words have vibrations. So when it's in an authentic language, uh, it makes a difference and you feel it differently. So thank you so much for that, Raphael. Really appreciate it. And I would love to just kind of have a little discussion for a few minutes before we talk about the sponsors about World Wellness Weekend. And Sarah, you've been so enthusiastic about the five pillars. I'm going to pass it over to you. And I am I am not familiar with World Wellness Weekend. Um, like many of you, maybe I am not. And so when I started digging a little bit deeper into World Wellness Weekend, I found it so fascinating that there that is taking place. Well, there's like five or six different regions, but there's over 133 countries all around the world that are part of World Wellness Weekend. And, and so some of the regions that are participating, I mean, some of them obviously started way before us, but Melbourne, Vietnam, India, USA, and Canada. And yes, we may be a small community right now on, on Zoom, um, on Facebook, but to think about really stepping into the magnitude and the connectivity and the oneness that is happening, I started imagining what it would really feel like for me. I'm a I'm, I'm a feel kind of gal. I don't if I, if I think about it too much, I just get in my own way. So, how like what does it feel like if we were truly well, and then rippling that effect like Denise had said but at the whole, like we're one planet, <laughs> no, one race, one planet on this planet. And as if we were all um, whole and well, and I just was grasping my mind around that. And then I dug a little bit deeper into those five pillars uh, that World Wellness Weekend um, represents. And uh, I just found them fascinating. Uh, sometimes we compartmentalize or limit ourselves to what wellness encompasses. And these five pillars, at least for me, broaden my awareness of wellness. So the five pillars are one, sleep and creativity. You may want to take note of these because maybe, maybe you are like me and was only compartmentalizing, oh, I'm well in this area. Um, but maybe there's other areas that you could also amplify. So take note of these. Sleep and creativity, number one. Number two, nutrition and immunity. Number three, vitality and movement. Number four, serenity and mindfulness. And five, purpose and solidarity. Which ones are you really excelling at? For me, oh my goodness, movement, serenity, at least when my kids aren't driving me crazy, <laughs> mindfulness, purpose, and solidarity. Those are really great. You know, sleep and creativity sometimes. I don't know. Nutrition, I try my best. Um, immunity, vitality, I could always have some improvement in there. So, so, so take note of yourself. Um, any any feedback from Peggy and Raphael that you would? Well, you know, it's, it's funny, Sarah, because I'm a personal development coach. I'm trained in Eastern and Western traditions by world masters. And these five pillars are very much what I work with clients to help them get into balance. And I am constantly my own work in progress and always <laughs> working on these different elements because 
we all keep changing, growing, we have different challenges. And so we do respond differently. And there's always, I find, one part of our lives or even multiple parts of our lives that are out of balance. And so Mm -hmm. what Denise shared earlier with frequency and vibration and, and bringing things more into alignment and what some of our upcoming speakers are going to talk about really helps address these five pillars. So it's really exciting, again, to be part of World Wellness Weekend And I got involved over four years ago as an ambassador. Out of the blue, I got a call from Jean-Guy de Gabriac, and he is the founder. He's based in Paris in Belgium. And he reached out because we were doing a huge event in our area on the Paradise Coast from Florida's Everglades to Marco Island to Naples. And he heard of it. And I thought a lot of people around the world were doing these kind of, you know, countywide events. We had 50, 60 different activities going on, and we do this every January. And so he reached out and said, whoa, you're a pioneer. That's amazing. I want to work with you. So I started working with him. He is amazing. His intensity and perseverance in uh, really encouraging people, motivating people, inspiring people. I mean, he really walks the walk. And I'm so grateful that we are part of World Wellness Weekend here in September to just kind of reiterate those five pillars and the things that are so important for us. Um, really as human beings so that we can show up and be the best we can possibly be. And it's interesting because with Raphael being part of our MC, I'm going to give you a few minutes, Raphael, just to talk about with Blue Zones, we have the power of nine. So it expands in slightly different ways. But again, I think it just may resonate with people and open uh, minds and inspire in different ways. So Raphael, do you want to quickly mention the power of nine that's part of our blue zones project sure and it's very aligned with what sarah and you were uh, just talking about so um basically the power nine it's the nine different principles that dan butner when he was traveling around the world trying to understand and find where and why people was living a uh, healthier longer lives um when he came back he just said okay what was coming in all these areas and a lot of the things were kind of what we, what you just said, um, purpose, having, you know, certainty of purpose, uh, knowing why are you getting up every morning to do what, you know, you're focused, you have a mission, you're, um, you know, uh, driven. So that's really, really important. That's one of the things that Blue Zones Project does for that community. We do purpose workshops for free. Uh, in Spanish, English, and Creole here in the community. So anyone can participate and understand how purpose can uh, make you happier uh, and give you seven more years. And this is research uh, based, seven more years of healthy life. Um, Some of the other principles, Sarah also mentioned it and Peggy, you did too. Eating, of course, healthier, moving naturally connecting with others, um, having that sense of community or belonging to uh, any, we call it the right tribe. And your right tribe, it's that people that makes you happy, you know, family first. So a lot of different things, simple things that are part of what Dan Buettner found, all these people had around all these places he went. It was just really, really common, free, simple things that sometimes we forget uh, to put in our top of mind and and practice them. So uh, we're pretty aligned in, in, you know, it's not that hard. It's just uh, a matter of knowing what all these things are and just putting them into practice. And what I love, Raphael, about the power of nine, the five pillars, is that it's spreading all over the world. And today being part of this World Wellness Weekend, There are so many like us who are lights, who are walking the walk, who are sharing, educating, motivating, and that's going to make a difference for all of us. And as we were talking the other day, uh, Sarah, Raphael, myself, we were talking about the, and Denise mentioned it as well, just the uncertainties of our times, 
the challenges that we have to stay healthy. There's so much stress and anxiety, which shuts down our abilities to cope and to really think clearly, to manage our health, to manage our nutrition. All of those things go out the window when you're all stressed and anxious and tense. So it's so nice and um, rewarding to see so many people in almost a thousand different cities scattered all over the world doing free activities to help promote wellness. And again, Sarah, you and I talked about this as well, the idea that, you know, different uh, definitions of wellness exist in different people's minds. But at the end of the day, it's about feeling good. It's about doing the things that feed your body, mind, and allow you to fulfill the five pillars and the power of nine, you know, purpose and and really being part of life. So it's, um, I think it's just uh, mind blowing to know that we are creating these butterfly ripples all over the world just by being here together today. Um, I do just want to mention um, our sponsors because we are very grateful to have um, the Essential Toolbox and Cecilia Campatoria will be speaking in a little bit. She comes on uh, in just about 20 minutes and she uh, is all about essential oils and how to use them in your life to be healthier. And um, she's got some great recipes to share with us. And so we're grateful to the Essential Toolbox for being a sponsor. I'm also personally grateful to Coach Caroline for being a sponsor. She's a personal friend, Caroline Thonin. She grew up in Belgium, has owned spas all over the world. And when she first moved to the United States, she started using skin moisturizers that were made here. And she started getting sicker and sicker and sicker and didn't know why. And finally discovered that she had arsenic poisoning from the moisturizer that she puts on her skin. And I don't know if you know this, but whatever goes on your skin is in your circulatory system in 20 seconds. So if you're putting toxic chemicals on your skin, you are basically poisoning yourself over time. So Caroline started uh, Beautiful Health, which is an amazing wellness uh, boutique, as well as an online store with all the products vetted by her to make sure there are no toxic ingredients in anything that touches your skin from moisturizers to um, uh, body creams, to toothpaste, to deodorants, et cetera, et cetera. She also is a coach. And so she trains clients in adopting healthy habits for life about nutrition. So she's really following our, our pillars uh, about boosting immunity, about mindfulness, and also about stress anxiety management. So Coach Caroline is reachable by email at coachcaroline111 at gmail.com or by phone at 239-300-3190. So um, do reach out to her. She's just an amazing person. She also now is a volunteer with Dr. Joe Dispenza, who is doing amazing trainings around the world. So she's uh, really quite extraordinary. And I'm grateful personally that she's uh, a sponsor of our program today. So um, Cecilia you know has- find, Oh, do you know what I find so interesting while I'm listening to both you and Raphael share is that when, when we come from a place of wellness, mind, body, soul, all the things. Well, when we come from a place of wellness, I just wrote down, we're not in competition, we're in collaboration. So when the founder of World, World Wellness Weekend reached out to you, and I'm not going to attempt to say his name because I always say it wrong. So, <laughs> um, and when he reached out to you, you were doing similar things, but because we've taken the time to get to know ourselves, to love on ourselves, to appreciate ourselves, to be well, then we can see how can we collaborate? How can we make this better? How can we, we grow and serve? Um, how can we show up differently versus like, oh, well, she's doing the same thing as me. Oh, whatever. <laughs> and try to squash up, you know, like, it, I just found that to be so fascinating that, that we are talking about similar things 
um, and even be well in paradise. Even if you want, if you want to share about that, or, or shall we wait? Um, sure. No, I'd be happy to. But Sarah, that's so true, and and I feel you know that's personally my mission is to help um, inspire and educate others to be able to live healthier, more productive, happier lives because the more I can influence someone else to be better. It's not a competition to me. Oh my gosh, that's gonna diminish me. No, it raises all of us up and it helps our world be a better place. And we need more. We need more of our light workers and people like yourself and Raphael who are walking this walk and Jean-Guy of course. And so, yes, it was so exciting. And I think Sarah, you know, I love your name Sparks because I think when you connect with like minded people, there are sparks. And that's how I felt with Jean Guy. It was really awesome. So um, it was exciting. Uh, it's over, gosh, five years ago, starting uh, the Paradise Coast Wellness Alliance with all of these amazing leaders throughout our Southwest Florida community. Blue Zones, in fact, has been one of our sponsors. We have Edgewater Beach Hotel and the JW Marriott, and we have the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and we have the commissioners of Collier County and the city of Naples mayor, and, and just all these wellness businesses and practitioners that have jumped on with us to collaborate and basically provide even more opportunities for our area to access wellness. And most recently this January, we did our big January event. It's a weekend event. We have another one coming January 22nd and 23rd in 2022. And on that weekend, we launched the Mental Wellness Scholarship Fund. And the idea of that is to create some funds that we can actually help educate educators in more of these wellness practices, the mind, body, heart, spirit, so that they have better coping skills that they can then share to their students. Kids today, I'm seeing it at the age of seven and eight are suffering anxiety. And especially now with, do we go to school? Don't we go to school? Do we wear masks? Don't we wear masks? And what's my mom and dad doing? And all of these pressures and frustrations and anxieties are affecting all ages. And I feel the more we can help our teachers teach the skills that we've learned through our activities and our processes and the things we've been open to, uh, again, the better that can influence everyone. So we do have uh, a donation link on the bewellinparadise.com website for anybody who would like to donate. We're highly appreciative. And um, we also are looking for applicants who are possibly in, uh, their last year of college or in graduate school who are going into education, apply for the scholarship. And the scholarship consists of $1,000 towards courses, mentoring for a year with myself, as well as an eight week health coaching program with Coach Caroline. So it's about a $5,000 package, um, probably even more. And so it's a great opportunity for someone to really get on this path that we're also passionate about. So thank you, Sarah, for allowing me some time to talk about that. Yeah, I also was, I was taking notes while Denise was sharing. And I recently have been letting go of emotions. And because I'm a coach, sometimes we talk through things. But what I found is that sometimes it doesn't need to be talked about. Maybe it's just, and, I, and I, as she was sharing, I was like, well, words have frequency. So how can I say this? Sometimes when we're working through things, when we're working towards that wellness within us, then we may not find the words that have that higher vibration because we're going through something. But if we could feel our way through, feel a higher vibration, feel a, a different frequency, so I was enjoying those sound bowls and um, just the, the 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 hurts that were were in that meditation, because as we are stepping into who who we are who we are being called to be, sometimes letting go of who we thought we 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 were supposed to be. Sometimes I think we don't have to talk about it. Sometimes we just need to feel our way into it. Because sometimes I have found the more that we talk about it, the more we keep ourselves stuck in the <laughs> past. 
And so I was just finding it so fascinating. And I'm, I was trying to formulate a question around that, that maybe uh, you and Raphael and I could talk about just like, have you experienced healing in vibration and sound or has talk therapy per se, I don't even know if therapy talk, talking been, been more beneficial have, have either of you experienced so, that? I, I, and I don't know if that's too personal. To no, talk no, about, it's but. so interesting that you bring that up because I think here, here's what I've learned because I'm trained in about 20 different modalities from Eastern and Western functional medicine, functional nutrition, but I'm trained by world masters in Qigong, in yoga, in mindfulness, in meditation, all those things. What I have found is that so many of these diverse skills work but it's what works for the individual, what works for you, what your belief system is. And I work with a lot of people who have terrible anxiety from the past, post-traumatic stress disorder, or they're fearful about the future. So the ultimate point is they're not in the present. They're not here with us right now, mind and body, what Denise taught us, what you're talking about, Sarah, just being able to really be in this moment is such a a huge gift. And so there are a lot of techniques that can help activate being present and getting out of your head. Oftentimes the brain, the mind, the thoughts, which we have over 2000 thoughts an hour, take us on all these different tangents that create more stress and anxiety rather than quieting the mind, not, you know, suffocating thoughts, but just living in better harmony with the thoughts. Um, paying attention on purpose to what you're thinking and what your self-talk is, because a lot of times we're sabotaging ourselves by the things we're telling ourselves. So it's really about um, being able to develop your own skill set that work for you using all these different approaches. And we're going to hear from two more speakers that are going to give us more opportunities to have even more um, input in what can work for the people on Facebook and the people in our, um, in our Q and A room. And uh, we should probably mention that again for Facebook uh, listeners, watchers, uh, there is a link if you would like to be part of the inside group uh, that's in the Zoom session, you can still register, uh, it's all free. So you can go ahead and see the link on the Facebook page. And what that will give you is an opportunity to join the special lounge room with questions and answers directly with our speakers. And um, Raphael, Sarah and I are holding space in the main room and just kind of sharing our thoughts and having a very interesting, uplifting conversation in my mind anyway, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Raphael, do you wanna do like a kind of a quick summary of what we've been talking about for our Spanish speaking population? Mm -hmm. Sure, um, I can do that. But let me just, before I do that, share something with you in English. And it's that I remember, and you know, listening about all this frequency uh, subject, I remember, do you know the show Mythbusters from Discovery Channel? Maybe you do, maybe. So mm -hmm. there's two guys that they are always, well, it's, it's a bigger team, but uh, there's two hosts and they're always, you know, doing like experiments in real time. So uh, they put two different plants uh, with two different kinds of music uh, to see how they would grow if they had like really harmonic music. And then uh, the other plants, they put like heavy metal and, you know, they would speak like uh, trash to, to, to this plants and all that. So at the end, both plants uh, grew, they just grew differently. So it was just kind of like, hey, we're always going to grow. It all depends on what kind of vibration or energy or you're feeding the plants. You know, they're going to grow in one way or another, but they, they are going to still grow. It's not that they're not going to grow or they're going to um, die or it's just, you know, what are you choosing for yourself when you're choosing, you know, how do you want to vibrate or how do you want to uh, wake up every day, for example? One of the things, and I guess the light from the sun might have some uh, vibration or, or some, you know, energy. So just getting up every day and saying hi to the sun, for example, could mean, um, you know, you're uh, 
uh, starting your day with a different uh, energy vibration or whatever we want to call it, right? So I just wanted to say that. So I'll share a little bit in Spanish. So eh, hemos estado conversando de cómo las energías, las vibraciones, este, lo que le damos nosotros de nutrientes a nuestros cuerpos, por supuesto, no se diga eh, de los alimentos, sino de todas las energías con las que nos topamos todos los días, cómo eso puede hacernos una persona eh, más saludable, mejor, eh, con una eh, mayor salud este, en comparación con si hacemos algo parecido, pero que no tenga pues, eh, todos los beneficios que podría tener alimentarse otra vez de energía, vibraciones, colores, este, que sean armónicos y que estén en sintonía. Este, de eso se trata un poco la conversación que hemos estado teniendo hasta ahorita. What vibration did you find that was your vibration and your frequency when Denise took us through that? Oh, that's so interesting, Sarah. I, you know, I, I tend to be an omer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so I use that a lot. And, you know, it's so interesting because I use a lot of frequency. I have a lot of different devices that I use that have different frequencies and work differently uh, for different applications and purposes. And, you know, I really do feel that's the future of medicine and we're seeing it more and more. Um, and we can create our own vibrations just by making that sound. And one of the things that I learned studying neurosciences is that by oming, om, it actually activates the vagus nerve, which runs down the back of the neck. And that actually activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which allows us to be calmer and be able to think more clearly. So Sarah, what, what uh, frequency was yours? Well, it's a sound. <laughs> and so it was uh, like, hum. And I don't know if I'm doing it right because it was just like what I was feeling. <laughs> and I was thankful that I was muted. So <laughs> I was trying to feel into it. But I was like, okay, so if we're, we're feeling this frequency that we are, how would that affect our sleep and creativity, our nutrition and immunity, our vitality and movement and serenity and mindfulness and purpose? And so, and I was like, if we are being the frequency that, that which we are, then all of these five pillars would apply. So let's say, for instance, I was thinking about nutrition because I've really been tapping into my body. Because for such quite a time, it was like I was totally in my body and not spiritual. And then I became spiritual and then I was not in my body. And so now I'm like, I can have it all. <laughs> I, I don't have to live in just one pillar. I can, I can live in all of them because I am a whole being. And so I was like, oh, so if we just take it to a yes or a no, and what feels good, what, what, what is that frequency that feels good within us? So we could like touch each food that, that you know, like whatever, when we want to, to eat, and be like, hmm, is this light and right? Does it feel good? Does it, hmm, yeah, yes. <laughs> or is it, oh, no. <laughs> and also I was like, I just, I love that. I love thoughts. that. <laughs> no, I think that's very possible because food has vibration and food is medicine and different foods vibrate at different frequencies and you're drawn to certain things that you need. And it's really funny because recently I discovered that I'm actually sensitive to oranges and I've always gravitated towards eating oranges because I thought they were healthy, the vitamin C and the fiber and all of that. And yet I never really liked oranges and never understood why. So your point, tune into the body, what you're feeling, the more you tune in, the more, you know, you get signals and you get messages and you get guidance on really what the right things for you are. And if you're constantly getting guidance that you need that uh, 10 more donuts, um, I will just share with you, then you're addicted to sugar and don't follow that guidance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, donuts give me a stomach ache. So that's a, that's a big <laughs> Oh, heaven. Oh, do we need to be um, 
We have about a minute before everybody from the lounge comes back into our main room here. And so um, as soon as everybody returns, I'll do an introduction uh, for our next speaker and she will be with us in just about a minute. And she's not only our next speaker, but she's one of our sponsors today. So big thanks to Cecilia Compatori from the Essential Toolbox. And I know we're seeing uh, rotating pictures of her beautiful imagery from the Essential Toolbox uh, coming up from time to time here. And uh, so are we all together yet? Let's see. Yes, I believe we are back. I think we are. All right. And Cecilia, let's see. I just want to make sure that we have Cecilia in the, is Cecilia in the house? I'm here. <laughs> All right. Yay. Great. All right. Well, let me just um, share a very brief introduction. We're so glad you're here, Cecilia. We've been talking about you and sharing so many things in our, in our little main room here while we waited for uh, your presentation. And, um, Love your Essential Toolbox, it's awesome. Uh, she's the owner of the Essential Toolbox. Uh, Cecilia is a licensed massage therapist as well as certified essential oils coach. And what I love is how passionate, Cecilia, you are in educating people about using essential oils and all of the different recipes, the different applications, you make it so accessible and so enjoyable. So thank you so much for being thank here. You. It, take it away. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do a little share screen here. Um, there we go. I got it. Can you see it now? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, welcome to my natural solutions class with essential oils, uh, natural solutions for happier, healthier life. Today, I hope to show you how to use essential oils easily and how they can empower you in your life. Uh, there's three ways basically to use essential oils and they are aromatically, topically, and internally. Aromatically is basically smelling. Uh, so we do that via a diffuser. Uh, we can smell oils right out of the bottle. You can make a spray and smell them. Or uh, I have a small baby food jar in my office, which I have a cotton ball on. And I actually drop drops of rosemary on that. And I sniff that throughout the day so that uh, I have some memory support. It does great with that. Topically, uh, topically is applied directly to the area of concern. So if you have uh, an issue with a shoulder or a knee or an arm, you would dilute uh, essential oils with a carrier oil and you would apply it directly to that area. Um, I like coconut oil because it seems to be less greasy to me, but you can use any carrier oil that you have, um, all, um, apricot oil, jojoba oil, things like that. Uh, internally, pure essential oils can be used internally. There are some, however, that you cannot ingest. And those uh, you would tell by looking at the bottle, it would say essential oil supplements on the bottle in order for you to be able to ingest the oils. Uh, with that being said, you have, still have to do your due diligence and uh, see what's in your oils. All oils are not created equally. Um, the essential oil business is a huge industry and unfortunately having money involved, there is a lot of dilution and substitution that goes on with it. So you really need to check your oils out, uh, before you buy them. Uh, and also don't go to a big box store or, uh, a drug store and expect that you're going to get a bottle of pure frankincense for $7 a bottle. It's not going to happen. Knowing how they are farmed and where they come from, the Middle East, it's just not possible that that happened. Um, there are websites that you can go to to check out your oils. It makes it really easy. There's one that I use a lot. It's APRC. Aromatic Plant Research Center. And you can go on there and you can look up the brand of oils that you want to use or that you're currently using uh, and check on the uh, efficacy and purest purity of that oil. Here is a great example of an oil that has many uses. Peppermint oil, this is from the Mental and Emotional Health Series. 
Uh, it's for when you're feeling down, you take a drop of peppermint and, and you put it into uh, four ounces of water and you swish it around in your mouth and it leaves you with a boost in optimism and a respite from heaviness. Also, I do this after lunch. And for me, it not only does that for me, but it also freshens my breath after I eat. So there's another uh, example of uh, how an oil can work in different ways for you. It's also good in other instances as well. Um, we use it for digestive support. Um, it can also be used uh, for cooling in a spray. Uh, if you're outside in the hot sun, you can make a, a cooling spray with peppermint and water and shake it up and spray it on. Uh, also for women, if you have warm personal moments, you can use the cooling spray with the peppermint in it as well. Peppermint's also great for respiratory support, support and insect bites. Remember, it's cooling, so in an insect bite, it would be really good for that. And the reason why oils do this is because oils have a high amount of different chemical constituents, so they can support different issues within your body. This is called DigestSend. It's actually a doTERRA blend. It, uh, it is a mixture of peppermint, coriander, ginger, caraway, cardamom, fennel, and anise uh, oils. It's spicy, sweet, minty, and licorice tasting and smelling all at the same time. This is the oil. If I gave this to you and you didn't believe in, in essential oils and you had tummy issues and I gave this to you, you would believe when you were done. It works that well. I actually have been using it all day because I ate something yesterday that I should not have. And it just gave me a huge stomach ache. And I've been using DigestSend and I'm ready to go. I'm good. Um, so it can be used to support healthy digestion. It can soothe occasional upset stomach. It helps ease motion sickness. So if you have kids or animals that aren't real great in the car or even big humans, um, you can use this for that. Uh, it eases feelings of queasiness and helps ease indigestion. Um, and it can be used whether your digestive system runs slow or fast. Either way, it will work for you. Um, when people often tell me they have gut issues and they're having troubles, I uh, will make them a roller bottle of uh, digestin and uh, coconut oil, and I will have them uh, put, put roll it on their abdomen and, uh, and use it that way. It works great. And this is a sample of a stomach tamer roller that you can make for a child. Uh, 12 drops of digestin and 12 drops of wild orange. And you're going to add them to the roller ball and you're going to fill the remainder with carrier oil and you're going to put the roller and the lid on and shake and you apply to the abdomen as needed. Um, this is great for children. It's great for babies. It's great for older people. Uh, it's really good for everybody. I myself, like I said previously, use this and I did use it today. Um, this would have this dosage would have to be adjusted, though, for um, for smaller children and for adults, because that's kind of for an older kid right there. But um, it works great. This is a diffuser blend, it's called Motivation. It is uh, a mix of citruses, grapefruit and lime, and Douglas fir. So it's going to be an alerting aroma, but very grounding as well because of the Douglas fir in it. Um, this, I, I had discovered in doing my research on Douglas fir that doTERRA actually harvests their Douglas fir from New Zealand, where Douglas fir is considered an invasive species and it's threatening their ecosystem there. So by harvesting them there, they are not only providing us with a quality, pure product, they are also helping the ecosystem in uh, in New Zealand. So um, a double a double whammy there. This this is also great for grounding this this motivation blend. Anything with the tree blends, um, you think tree roots, they're very grounding. They hold into the ground. They're a grounding oil. And they're great for that. This is a wonderful book. It's called Essential Emotions, Your Guide to Process, Release, and Live Free. Um, this is the ninth edition. There's probably a 10th coming out shortly because there's some, been some new oils that have come out. Um, basically what this is, it introduces stages of emotional issues and it gives you tools that you can do use yourself and work on your own emotions. So if I were to go in this book, I can look at the emotions 
and I could look up frustrated, um, maternal issues, paternal issues, dominated, discouraged, um, let's see what else, reassured, relaxed, relieved. I could look these up and what, what would happen is you look them up and you get a list of oils that will help you with those issues. And there's also questions for you to ask yourself about why that issue is. Uh, and then you would go to the uh, front. There's an alphabetized listing of both the single oils and the blends. And you would look, at, look up the uh, oil and it would give you negative emotions, positive properties of the oil. And it would give you companion oils that you could use with that oil and also suggested uses. So it would tell you aromatic, topical or internal and it would tell you how much to use. So um, I actually, um, use this quite a bit. Um, I had an occasion to use it most recently for myself. Uh, I became very distressed about what was going on in the world with other people in other places. And, and I'm very sensitive and I got very emotional about it. And so it was really difficult for me. And so I used this book to help myself. And, and it was a wonderful tool to have. This is lemon essential oil. Lemon's actually one of my favorite oils. I use this a lot in my DIY uh, cleansers and I also use it in sprays and for my skin. Um, it is only 4.4 cents a drop wholesale. So it's a great deal. And it's a good thing to have because it does a lot of things for you. If you can see, this is the short list. Any of these lists I give of the oils are the short lists. There are a lot of other uses. So it's a powerful surface cleanser, henceforth the use in the cleaning products. Uh, it's great for seasonal threats. It's great as an odor remover. It's mood boosting. It's a citrus, so mood boosting. Uh, it's used to flavor water. I use lemon daily in my water. I have issues with water intake. I think a lot of people do. And so what I do is I add lemon essential oil to my water. It helps water taste better. So I'm encouraged to drink it more. Uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm mood, boost, mood boosting because lemons are citrus and it's cleansing my mouth at the same time. So it's a win-win-win there on that one. Uh, it's also a non-toxic label remover. I have this in the cabinet in my kitchen and I use this instead of uh, solvents or any toxic item that I don't want to smell or touch to get labels off with. I do a lot of recycling, making my own products. So um, I do use this one a lot. And it's also good for your skin. So powerful surface cleanser, powerful surface cleanser here as well. So uh, I use these in my sprays and some of the um, soaps that I make for my face as well. So this is a, um, uh, a little air freshener that you can make. Uh, it's not only easy to make, but it's very cost effective. I figured it was 75 cents plus the cost of the still, distilled water. And I think that's a penny an ounce. So it's under a dollar to make for this. So it's an eight ounce glass spray bottle. You're gonna use seven drops of lemon, seven drops of wild orange, seven drops of grapefruit, and you're gonna shake it up and spray. And at the end, uh, Time permitting, I'm going to just show you how easy and quick it is to make one of these. So remember to use distilled water in this, because if you use regular tap water, in a few days, you're going to find floaters in there. Um, distilled water is inert water. Basically, all the minerals are taken out of it, so you're not going to have that issue. Um, and like I said, it costs about 75 cents plus the cost of the, of the distilled water. So um, you can easily use this to replace the uh, plugins and the sprays that you have in your house that are not very good for you or the environment. At the same time, you're mood boosting the citruses, remember? Here's another mood booster, a soft scrub cleanser. Easy to make. You're mixing baking soda with Castile soap. You're adding water. You're mixing that together. And then you add the vinegar and the essential oil. It's that simple. It probably takes you longer to assemble the ingredients than it does to make the actual product. Um, this recipe is good for two to four applications. And the only thing I advise people to do is to test patch 
when they make this because we don't just have porcelain and tile anymore. We've got, you know, man-made, we've got natural, we've got granite, we've got marble, we've got Korean, we've Korean, we've got everything. So you test a spot that's out of sight first, just to make sure there's no adverse reactions with it. I've never had anything happen with the things that I've used, but it just, it, with what we pay for things and how hard we work for them nowadays, it pays to be careful. Ah, lavender. I have to say that lavender holds a special place in my heart. Um, I actually did not sleep through the night for 15 years, at least. And I learned to live that way. I had accepted it and thought this is the way my life is. And I just, I lived like that. <laughs> and um, someone said to me, um, you need to try lavender. And I was like, yeah, okay. Like I tried everything. I tried herbs. I tried pills. I tried eating broccoli, hard boiled eggs, you name it. I've tried everything for it. it and I, so I was like, mm, okay, well, whatever, what do I got to lose? So I tried it. And the funny part is, is that it works so well that I didn't even know it was working. I had to stop and think about it one day. And then I realized it really was working. Um, so this one to me is, is it's the oil to me. Um, it's actually called the Swiss Army Knife of Oils because it does so many things. And this is just a small sprinkling of them. It's a skin soother. So anything skin, it will work on. Uh, it's very calming. It can be used for seasonal support. It's a great help with insect issues. I have used it on several occasions for some pretty nasty insect issues. Uh, and it's worked very, very well for me. Uh, support for stressful feelings and sleep support, as I had just mentioned. Um, it's just one of those oils, I, I think it does so many things and, and you just, it's something that every household needs to have. Lavender was a total game changer for me. I don't even know, know any other way to put it. This is a bug bite relief blend that uh, you can make. It's actually 10 drops of lavender and 10 drops of peppermint. Remember I had said that peppermint is cooling. So in this case for a bug bite, the lavender would be great, and then the peppermint cooling. So you would put those uh, 10 drops of each in a 10 milliliter roller ball, ball, fill the rest with coconut oil, shake it up, and you would roll it on. These are great to take with you on the go in your purse. If you have kids, it's perfect. I don't know, my grandkids get mosquito bites, and I swear to goodness, they get one and I find another one and another one and another one. And then before long, they're just itching like crazy and they can't stop. So this is a great help for that actually, especially for kids. Um, they drive me nuts too, so it works for me. Um, you can also alternately use 15 drops of Purify, which is a blend from doTERRA. Uh, it costs about $1.72 for the drops of lavender, not including the coconut oil. And it's about $1.20 for the drops of Purify. So they're very cost effective as well. This is a partial list of essential oils for discomfort. Discomfort lady here. Uh, I have a lot of issues in my neck and shoulders from car accidents that I have. So it's kind of an ongoing thing for me. I've used everyone on here except for blue tansy. Um, and I think that was like, cause I didn't have it at the time. Uh, but twice a day I use uh, doTERRA deep blue rub on my shoulder and my neck. And then I use a blend that I make. Uh, and right now the blend is Siberian fir, turmeric, frankincense, lavender, wintergreen, lemongrass, and copaiba. And I do change it every now and then. It seems like my issues sometimes get better when it's colder out and a little bit worse when it's warmer. And also if I strain one, I, I pull a muscle uh, and then I would change what was in there. But any of these can be used um, and you can combine them and see what works for you. I basically just, I, I just, play it by ear and then use what I think will work for me. And usually it works very well. Ha. Ah, this is the, the Mac Daddy of topical rollers for discomfort. And the good thing about this one is you can not only use it for topical use, but you can take it internally as well. So this you use a 10 milliliter roller ball, 
Uh, it's 10 drops of lemongrass, 10 drops of marjoram, and 10 drops of frankincense. Again, you put them in the roller ball, you put the roller on the lid um, after you add the coconut oil, fraction of the coconut oil, and you shake and apply as needed. This comes everywhere with me. This works really, really well. I pulled a muscle one day in one of my shoulders, of course, and I, it, it hurt so bad. I have to say I was in so much distress and I used this on it. And I, this is in my office, this is in my purse, and this is in my home. Um, I do not go anywhere without this because it works very, very well. It provides wonderful relief. So then there is the internal version of it. You use six drops of marjoram or oregano, six drops of frankincense, and six drops of lemongrass. I use these for head tension that I get from the neck and the shoulders being tight. Um, and you add them to veggie caps and you take every three four to four hours as needed. Um, I prefer the marjoram in mine, but everybody is different. I know a lady that uses half marjoram, half oregano, and that works well for her. You just have to figure out what works for you and you, and you use that. Um, I've never had to take more than two of these. Uh, and then they work very, very well. Huh. This is a new product that doTERRA just came up with, out with. It's called the Deep Blue Stick. It has copaiba in it, and it is labeled a topical analgesic. So you can use this for things like arthritis, for instance, and get a lot of relief. It's very quick drying. I got mine actually yesterday, they're not available to the public yet until October 1st, and I have been using it, it works great. Um, it's moisturizing, it has emollients in it that'll leave your skin feeling uh, soft and not greasy. Um, it's very soothing and cooling. It delivers temporary relief of minor aches and pains of muscles and joints. And it provides maximum over-the-counter strength plant-based menthol. And for those of you that do not know what copaiba is, copaiba is an oil that is used to, it's used in conjunction with other oils to help drive those other oils deeper into your tissue. Okay, it's also known for its high count of BCP, which is short for beta carophylline. You can see why the abbreviation. Uh, but beta carophylline and the chemical compounds in it are known for being soothing. Copaiba is sourced along the Amazon River in Brazil, and the communities in that area are considered among the most poverty stricken in the area. They're very, very poor there. And they have sold their copaiba in the past but they were not guaranteed a fair market price or regular sales by the people that were purchase, purchasing them. And so by sourcing copaiba in this area, doTERRA is helping to support the livelihoods of 3,000 harvesters. So that's a, a good thing. But doTERRA is not only committed to sustainability, but to impact as well. And that includes on the earth and the farmers that they partner with. This is, uh, these are websites that you can use to look up science and research on essential oils. My favorites at the top, pubmed.gov, hands down. Super easy to search. There's over 32 million citations on there. So there's a lot of information. I mean, you could go on there and research a specific oil. I went on for just for the heck of it one day and took doTERRA on guard and I put it in there to see what would happen. And I was amazed that I actually got results because it's a, it's, it's a huge library of medical of, uh, research uh, papers. There's also Google Scholar, MDPI, and NIH National Institute of Health, which is very good also. I just happen to prefer the uh, search in PubMed. This is my information in case anyone is to have a question now or later. Um, you can give me a call. My number is 239-825-3809. Um, you can text me uh, leave me a voice message. You can also email me at the essential toolbox at aol.com. Okay. And actually, I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to show you a couple of the things that I showed you. Okay. The zero capsule, I don't know if you can see this. They're very small. Um, and what you basically do is you drop oil into the larger end and then you cap the top and you squeeze it together and you end up with a capsule. But that's basically what you do and that, but that's how you would use them for ingestion. Um, the roller ball, 
This is a roller ball. You see the roller on the top. I'm just going to pop that off. And you're going to put in your drops of lemongrass. It's 10 lemongrass and your frankincense. And I use marjoram a lot, so I have a dropper on it. Um, put that in. 10 drops of that. Coconut oil. I'm going to drop that in there. Leave a little bit of room at the top to shake. Put the roller on, the cap on. Shake it up and that's it. The roller ball on the go. Whether it's for a bug bite, whether it's for discomfort, roll it right on, voila. Instant relief. This is an eight ounce bottle and I'm gonna make the uh, citrus spray that I showed you the recipe for. I took the liberty of filling it with the distilled water because nothing worse than watching somebody fill a bottle full of water. Um, so we are gonna put the drops of the grapefruit, with seven grapefruit and seven lemon. And then seven wild orange. Lid on, whoops, shake away and hope you don't squirt yourself. Uh, smells great, wonderful. So that's how easy it is to do this. It's, it's very simple, um, it's very good for the earth and it's very good for you. Um, the air quality in our houses have a tendency to be very poor actually because of all the chemical substances we use in our house, the cleaners and the, you know, the laundry soap and the dishwashing soaps. So there are natural ways to do that that aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg either. That's the other thing. A lot of these things are really cost effective when you do them yourself, extremely cost effective in some case. And I am, um, I've been told I'm cheap, so I'm pretty good at doing this. <laughs> My husband actually says, he actually does say this, when I pick up a nickel, the buffalo scream. I think this is a reference to my age too, but mm, what the heck. <laughs> so that's my presentation for this evening. If anyone has any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. If not, give me a holler. If you need a rollerball, want to try some of this yourself, or if you want to borrow this Essential Emotions book, if you're local, I can drop it to you and you can have a look at it to see if you're interested in that. And um, that's it. I thank you for having me here tonight. I've enjoyed myself and um, it's been good. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. That was amazing. I love essential oils and I love just how you combine things and share it to make it so simple and easy for others to access. That was awesome. And I know that um, Gwen Peterson, who orchestrated all this Spiritual Communities Network uh, wellness talk today, is going to be moving everybody into the special lounge with you, Ooh. Cecilia, uh, where uh, guests here participating on Zoom can actually ask you questions and interact with you and have a field day. And I don't know, we want to go there with you, but um, but we're going to stay here with Sarah Sparks and Rafael De Campo, De Campo, and we're going to have a little bit of a Spanish translation of what you presented so oh, that awesome. we expand even more to our bigger Spanish speaking audience. So Cecilia, sure. thank you so much thank for being you. a sponsor and thank you for a great presentation thank and you. love you. Great. Going to go good. Join again. Goodbye. Bye. And anyone who is watching on Facebook, uh, you can still register to be part of the special lounge in the Q&A area. The link is on the Facebook page. So you can still join and be part of the inside group if you would like. And uh, before, Raphael, I ask you to do some translations, I, I kind of laugh because both Sarah and I got on the Facebook page and, and we were like posting <laughs> <laughs> comments on the Facebook page. So Sarah, you had a lot of comments about how you use essential oils. So why don't you share that? Oh, well, I also know that as you comment more than four words on a Facebook Live, that it will also boost it. So thanks to Miss Gwen Peterson and Spiritual Communities Network last uh, business strategy meeting. <laughs> I learned that. So I was trying to also help boost the visibility of the Facebook Live. Um, I was commenting that I also use uh, doTERRA essential oils and 
I'd love to put and make a little spray out of it. And it was hilarious. So I run group programs and I, I had it sitting like, well, in my other office, I had shelves right behind me and I put it, I cleaned out my daughter's um, condi like spray and conditioner bottle and I just made it up in there and I made this little homemade uh, lemongrass spray stuff <laughs> and all of the clients who were on the group call also took out their like hair product sprayer that, <laughs> that they use with homemade essential oils <laughs> we had a good laugh but I love putting it on as I make the bed um, and then I spray the room and like the pillows and things with I love lemongrass because it just reminds me of like I'm at a hotel so I'm like I'm always going to be on vacation let's just do this <laughs> so yes why not absolutely <laughs> I use a lot of essential oils, as I mentioned on the on the post, and I also learned from uh, Gwen that that helps boost. So <laughs> I, I contributed as well. But um, I, I have a diffuser in my home. I'm always using different uh, scents. And a lot of it not only is for the air purification, but of course, different scents have different impacts on how we feel and how we show up. So I'm always changing it. I also like to use essential oils in my bath because I love warm baths to calm down and relax and get, I play a lot of tennis. So it helps me uh, relax my muscles and I use it for that. But one of the things that I use the most, and I love that she put so much time on lavender, uh, because that was one of my first introductions to essential oils. And not only did I find it calming and relaxing um, and use it a lot, but I found out through my research, it is antibacterial, antiviral. Whenever I would travel, I would put a little bit of essential oil of lavender under my nose on the airplanes to help purify the air. And now even traveling with masks, I have it under my mask so that, again, the air I'm breathing is clear and it smells really nice. Mm -hmm. And so I do, I love using lavender and so there's so many different applications for it. One, um, one funny thing before we go on, my daughter was colicky when she was for like the first, oh, probably three months of her life. And colic meaning screaming for at the top of your lungs for four hours at least. And she was going on 12 and I was I took like peace and calm or lavender or something and that a gal had had given me a client had given me and I rubbed it on like with like some some uh, diffuser oil uh, carrier oil that's what they call it like coconut oil on the bottoms mm -hmm. of her feet <laughs> she was still screaming and I was like I think I made a Facebook post like this oil is not calming her down mama needs it now <laughs> but yes it can be used for all. <laughs> so anyway. Well, and actually one last um, story I'll share. I was having a crown done in the dentist's office and they used this little string to make a better impression. And I didn't know that the little string that they use to help the gum to recede a little bit has epinephrine in it to help this gum recede a little more. And I started having heart palpitations. I started feeling terrible anxiety. And I remember sliding off the dentist chair because they had gone out to do something <laughs> and left me alone. And I went to my purse and I'm scrounging through my purse for my essential oil of lavender, put it under my nose and whew, I immediately calmed down. And then I discovered that I am allergic to epinephrine. So I have to be very careful about that. Um, Rafael, would you like to interject some Spanish sure. insights into what we all just experienced. It was just a great presentation by Cecilia. And again, I thank Cecilia for being one of the sponsors today as well. Yes, let me first ask Sarah, did any of the oil uh, calm your daughter after you tried? Oh, I actually think it was later on. It, honestly, I think it was me. Like, I think... <laughs> I think by me calming down, it calmed her down. Yeah. So. Yeah. That works too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My my wife actually uses some oil sometimes for uh, digestive uh, issues, and I think they work for her. I, I've never really, I think I used one once, but I, I've not, I haven't been trying them. So let me talk about Cecilia for a moment in Spanish. So um, Cecilia es la propietaria de Essential Toolbox, que traducido al español sería. Este, la caja de, herramienta, de herramientas esenciales. Es una masajista licenciada 
entrenadora certificada en aceites esenciales y por supuesto se habló de eh, muchas recetas de aceites específicos para distintas cosas, pero lo más importante que voy a decir es que los distintos aceites sirven para distintas cosas, distintas emociones, distintas terapias. Pueden ser utilizados aromáticamente, que es a través de los olores, pueden ser utilizados tópicamente, que es aplicarlos este, a través de la piel y pueden también ser ingeridos como este, o utilizados internamente, pero hizo una referencia que es muy importante que todo el mundo sepa que no todos los aceites están hechos y son tratados para que puedan ser ingeridos. Por supuesto, toda la presentación se basó en cómo estos aceites pueden hacer para mejorar un estado de ánimo o una condición específica que tenga la persona. Eh, todo eh, dio varias recetas este, donde combinando tantas gotas de un específico producto con otras gotas de otro producto, pues podían servir para aliviar, mejorar alguna condición. Más o menos eso fue este, lo que conversamos, pero hubo muchas recetas muy específicas que por supuesto este, no puedo compartir ahorita con todos. I would love to also recognize Gwen Peterson for all the work that she has done <laughs> uh, getting this together as well as you, Peggy, for, for partnering together. And I know Raphael, I feel like I, I finally got caught up yesterday with what, do, what you all have been doing. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I love being part of what Glenn has founded, the Spiritual Communities Network. I'm going on my second year now. And for, for me, I always thought that I had to bring out my masculine energy. And, and by me being uh, my feminine energy and my, my divinity, it has really excelled my business, but I love her component in Spiritual Communities Network as being a member, not just taking part in the activities and the events and workshops that, that we all offer, but also being a member of it, it gives me an opportunity to have those monthly business strategy meetings and think about, okay, how am I going to be marketing um, myself and my services for October, November, December, and so forth and so on. And sometimes we get so wrapped up in going with the flow as a spiritual peeps that 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 planning and that organizing really helps to to be well. <laughs> so I just want to shout out to her and, and thank her too. So oh absolutely. I, Gwen has been amazing. And uh, Spiritual Communities Network, had, I, I mean, I've watched it grown over the years that she's really been championing it. And I give her just great kudos for what she's accomplished. And for the group of people who have come together through Spiritual Communities, it's really expanded. And it's really been exciting to see that. And of course, as part of um, the founding of Be Well in Paradise, we're so delighted to have Gwen part of our Paradise Coast Wellness Alliance and to be part of our Be Well in Paradise partnership so that we can, again, the more we collaborate, as we talked in the last uh, segment, Sarah, the more we work together, the more you know we lift each other up, the more we support one another, but also we expand our reach to others who can benefit from information that we have. You know, we, we have some secrets. <laughs> and so let me just uh, mention one more time our sponsors uh, before we uh, come into our next presentation program. So I do want to mention Cecilia Campatori, who did a fabulous uh, presentation about essential oils and all the great recipes that she uses. And she has the essential toolbox. Um, very available to share uh, products and all of these great recipes that she has and appreciate her sponsorship. Coach Caroline has also been a sponsor. She really focuses on healthy living. She's the founder of Beautiful Health, which is we're so lucky to have here in Naples, Florida. She's also, it's a Blue Zones um, business. Um, it's been approved by Blue Zones. And she's also been an active volunteer for Dr. Joe Dispenza. Many people know about his workshops around the world. And as a coach, she teaches about healthy habits for life, about eating nutritionally, about boosting immunity, mindfulness, stress, anxiety management. And um, she's just an amazing individual. And I'm very appreciative that she has 
also volunteered to be part of our Be Well in Paradise Mental Wellness Scholarship Program, where the scholarship recipient will get an eight-week coaching program with Caroline, in addition to many other things. So our scholarship fund is on the BeWellInParadise.com website, as well as the application. So if anyone listening knows um, someone who's moving into education, uh, we want to equip educators with better skills for themselves, but also to teach their students. So uh, please share it. Uh, we're looking for applicants and we want to be able to uh, award these scholarships before the end of 2021. So uh, I'm excited to be able to bring that together just as part of Be Well in Paradise. And I also want to mention in January, we have our next huge weekend annual event, January 22nd and 23rd. Uh, we do a big walk to wellness down Fifth Avenue. We have lots of activities going on throughout the area of the Paradise Coast from Florida's Everglades to Marco Island to Naples. Um, and all of the calendar information is posted on the bewellinparadise.com. Uh, we're also looking for sponsors along the way to continue our nonprofit. So um, please get in touch with us at bewellinparadise uh, at gmail.com and uh, be part of the programs that we're doing as well. We're all doing this together and that's the joy of it is that we're all supporting one another in this mission to help ourselves and help one another show up and be better in their lives in every way. I know that everybody's kind of back in the room and we are ready for our next speaker. Sarah, would you like to go ahead yes. and introduce Heather Phillips? We are going to be connecting with Miss Heather Phillips. Oh my goodness. I got the pleasure of getting to know her through Spiritual Communities Network, but then also having her on my podcast, Floating on a Cloud. And of course, I've had many others on there as well. But um, through that conversation, I just learned so much. And, and Heather went into just what she's going to be talking about today is in, intro to um, meridian magic. We're going to be experiencing the benefits of balance energy. Our body is electric. And uh, don't, don't, don't you mind? I, every time I, I read it, I'm like, it's electric. Boogie, boogie, boogie. <laughs> <laughs> and during, during the presentation, Heather will lead you through three activities that may give you the shivers, and I love the shivers, and give you more balance energy so you can have um, more, more fun in life. And let me, let me share a little bit about Heather. Um, with her honors bachelor's um, a phys a physical education degree, Heather Phillips um, completed her thesis about energy balancing and how it affects muscles. She is a course creator, author, speaker, mentor, international recording artist. Good Lord, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Uh, director, um, um, and, and, and she has created um, many like global teams with, with, with Penn City, with the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Um, she calls herself an energy movement mentor. And so I just wanna welcome her. She's passionate about energy, self-care and empowers people to do um, energy self-testing to get unique solutions to reduce stress and pain and just be comfortable and we have a joyful life. So welcome, love. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Nice to see everybody. I see some familiar faces and some familiar names. So the, the topic of tonight is an introduction to meridians. And enter, uh, you, I'm sure you know what meridians are. And if you don't, it's very simple. They are the electrical pathway in your, your body. And they're called meridians. So the pathways that the energy of your body takes are called meridians. And you can affect them. You can affect them with touch. You can affect them with tracing. The other thing that affects meridians is the time of day. So uh, when I do my play shop, which Sarah did, I actually take you through the time of day energy balance. And that's very cool. Um, and a couple of things I want you to know about meridians. Meridians can help you with acute pain. So if you stub your toe, if you cut your finger, if you fall on cement concrete and bruise your hands, your wrists, your elbows, your forearms, your shoulders, ta-da, I did that about eight weeks ago. You can use these, these meridian 
techniques to affect acute pain. And I swear that because I traced my meridians and I accessed um, the energy of my body and made it go a certain direction, I healed very quickly. I have no more bruises, no more broken elbow, no more bruises on my hands. I've got full range of motion. Although when I did some um, movement in my arms today, I noticed one was a little cockeyed. <laughs> So I'm going, okay, I have more work to do. So meridians only run in one direction. So um, there's 14 meridians and each of them have a yin and a yang direction. Yin is mother earth to father sky and yang is father sky to mother earth. And so when you're, and just to be clear in Chinese acupuncture, the anatomical position is like this in North America, it's like this. So when we're doing yin and yang, you have to put your arms up for the Chinese acupuncture meridian system. And then you use the, when you look at the meridian flow, it is based on this position. So when you're going from your body to your fingers, it's on the inside and it's going from down to up, that's all the yin meridians. When you're going from your face to your feet, that's all the yang meridians. When you're going from your feet to your body, those are yin meridians. And when you're going from your head, uh, body to fingers, fingers, face, face to feet, you're doing all the yang meridians. The yin meridians are female and they work all the time. So you're talking about the heart meridian. It works all the time. So it's a yin. Your, um, oh, what's another one? Your lungs geez, without your lungs, <laughs> they're, they're also a yin meridian. So just those are some of the characteristics of meridians. Um, and so when you when you think about the energy running in one direction, sometimes what can happen is your brain won't register the direction of your meridian. And when that happens, you go into pain, you might get a lack of energy. You might get unfocused. You might start tripping and falling. So there's a lot of things that happen when your meridians, um, when your brain thinks your meridians are running backwards. <laughs> so the first technique we're going to do is we're going to switch on our body brain connection so that our brains register the meridian flow going in the right direction. Are you ready to do this with me? Um, you might have done this before, but it's always good to do it again. So just sit quietly and think, how is my energy? How's my focus concentration? Just, you know, a scale of one to 10. Could it improve a little bit or are you at your max already? <laughs> so let's go from there. I think I could improve mine. So what the first thing you do is you put your hand on your belly button and you put your other fingers, two fingers on one side and your thumb on the other. The reason we do two fingers and one thumb is because that's a neutral digit, positive, negative, positive, negative. We wanna create another neutral. So it's thumb and two fingers. Hand on your belly button and you're just gonna rub and you do this for like 10 seconds. Should we sing happy birthday? <laughs> oh, <I'm doing> this. <laughs> And then we change hands and do the other side. And if you wanna put some movement into it, you go from right to left and right to left and left to right, left to right, right to left. And that's the movement, right to left brain, right and left brain. That's what we're, we're signaling the energy to do. Now, the next one is two fingers on your top, above your top lip and your thumb underneath, your hand's still on your belly button. And now you're gonna rub here and the motion that you do here is just up and down, up and down. So this is the top and bottom of your brain. Change hands. And the last one is your hand goes at your tailbone. So you can put your knuckles or your fingers and your other hand is on your belly button still. So you do that. And the motion here is front back, just front back. Whew. Now, if you do a sigh or a cough or a big breath, it usually means your energy shifted and that's a good thing most of the time. <laughs> now change hands and do it again, forward and backwards. And this represents the front of your brain and the back of your brain. 
So you notice some, and that's that's that. Okay, so did anybody wake up a little bit, get a little bit more clear in their vision, in their thinking? It's okay if you didn't, and you, and it, you can put it in the chat if you want. Yes, 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 or no, I didn't. So there's one more that I'm going to do for for this, making sure your brain registers that your meridians are going one way, the, the right way. And that is, um, we're gonna wake up the central meridian or trace the central meridian, which is representing of the brain. So how you do that is you start at your pubic bone and you trace it up to your bottom lip. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna like fluff it a little bit. We're just gonna fluff it. So we're gonna, Fluff it. So make a zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Now this is the one that you should get shivers with. Up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And now we're gonna end it up. So nice and straight and up and out. From the pubic bone up to the bottom lip and out. Up and out. Now let's just go a little bit faster and smile. <laughs> and you might get shivers here. This is the one that often gives people shivers. All right. And the one more to make sure the body brain is connected is also drinking water. So just take a sip if you've got it by you. Now, meridians, um, I'm going to do one more technique a little bit later. But I just wanted to let you know that my, my passion and I want to empower people to do self-testing. That routine right there is what you need to do before you start doing self-testing so that you get accurate answers from your higher power, your higher self, God, spirit, God, creator, whatever you call that, that light that comes through you, to you. Sometimes we get mixed messages in a muscle test, a self-test a meridian, a body meridian, or pardon me, a body pendulum, we may get mixed messages. Or yesterday we went forward for yes, and today we're going backwards for yes. That just means your body brain are not connected and you need to do those energy tips to make sure that your brain and your body are connected and that your brain is saying, the energy runs this way. <laughs> the energy runs this way. Um, so once you understand and you know the directions of the meridians, now you can use them to your advantage. So for instance, if you've got a pain, I had pains in my elbows. I had pain in, in my chest. I had pain in my hands. So what I did was I figured out, well, which meridian is starting where on my hands or which meridian is starting where on my body. And what I did was I did a broad stroke. So I got three all at once. And I went from my body to my fingers and I went up and down and up and down and up and down because I was in acute pain. It was in acute pain. Actually, the first day I couldn't do that. I couldn't move my arm. So that was out, but I did visualize that. But as at week three, I was still in pain, but not as much, but I was, but I could move my hands. I could move my arms. So I did this. And this is for acute pain. So if you've got acute pain somewhere on your arms, on the insides of your arms, your chest, your fingers, your hands, your palms of your hands, your wrists, it's a really great idea to trace the inside of your arm, palm up, and do that like as many times as you want, but you end out body to fingers, end with body to fingers, end with body to fingers. And you'll notice that you'll get shivers or the pain will go away. It's just amazing. I had a, a gentleman, I was a trainer for a football team when I was in university. And uh, one of the football players got injured on the field and had to go to the hospital. And he ended up having a, a dislocated shoulder. When he came back, he was in a sling. But you know, um, young men who win want to party. And so yeah, that's what he did. And by the end of the night, his arm was out of his sling. And we were on the bus to go back home. And he was, Heather, I want some medicine. Well, I'm no doctor but I do know you're not supposed to mix alcohol with, with medicine. So I said, sorry. So what I did was I start, I looked at the meridian, where is the pain in his body? And I was able to, to pinpoint it to the large intestine meridian, which traces from your pointer finger 
up the back of your arm. So what's that one? That is a Yang Meridian, right? So I went up like this and I did a slightly different technique. So instead of doing the tracing, which is this, I actually did pain walking, which is taking the Meridian and tracing it. But I had my hand where the pain was and he'd go, ah, so I'd stay there for a little bit. And then I keep going up. So the pain, his dislocated shoulder was here, but he had pain on the meridian. So you, so I actually would apply pressure at the spot and I'd keep going and I'd keep going. I'd keep going until I was done and he'd fall asleep. Guess what? I knew he wasn't in pain. <laughs> so every 45 minutes or so, he'd wake up and doing the same. So I did it again. I did it all the way home, which is a four hour, four hour drive. And I do know that he came back and played football three weeks sooner than he was expected to. So the power of meridians, the power of balancing your, your meridians, the power of taking pain away in the simplest way. Now, taking pain away doesn't mean you, can, you shouldn't go to the hospital to get an x-ray or to make sure that there's nothing broken. That's not what this is about. This is about you cut your finger, you stubbed your toe, find out you stub your toe, what meridian is that? Big toe is spleen and second toe is stomach, and bottom of the foot is kidney, and there's a few other ones down there. So you just find out which one it is, and you start to trace it if you can, or have somebody else do it for you. Broad strokes, you don't have to be exact for this. The pain, the pain walking you do, but this stuff you don't. Um, so pain comes in three stages. There's the acute pain, the sub uh, acute, the sub acute pain, and then the chronic pain. And I learned very recently that there's something called chronification, which means that when you're in acute pain, your body is your body's the one that your body and the brain, the part of the brain is physical. It's the physical sensations. It's the part of the brain that when you touch something hot, your brain goes, or your, your spine actually goes, no, don't do that. It's the reflex, right? If you've had a bad experience, um, or you've been mistreated in the hospital or surgery didn't go well, there was some emotional something or other happened in that acute stage, subacute stage, the chronification uh, process has started. And by the time you're at the six month mark, it's chronic pain. At that point, it's no longer physical, it's emotional. Very, very, very important. Emotions get trapped in meridians they get trapped in muscles. And so it's very important to make the distinction. Chronic pain is related to the emotional body. The emotional body also is the meridian body and the physical body, so like at this level, not this level. Do you know what I mean? Most people in chronic pain think they need surgery, but truthfully, they just need to get to the emotional part of their, um, their being and clear it, address it. And, um, knowing meridians can help you do that because there's an emotion attached to every meridian and i have a meridian matrix that i'm going to gift everybody um i'll put it in the chat i'm not maybe i'll put it in the chat after i do the meridian massage because the meridian massage is the third technique for giving you energy and balancing your meridians so we've already done the switching which is important now we're just going to do the meridian massage now think of it this way we've got a central and a governing, and then we've got 12 other meridians. We've got body to fingers, fingers to face, face to feet, feet to body. That's four, four ways, right? Multiply that by three and you have 12. And that's exactly how we're gonna do the meridian massage. <laughs> we're gonna do it three times and we're gonna end with the central and governing. And with the governing, you have to almost visualize the energy coming over. And as long as you touch the beginning and the end, you'll be okay. So are you ready to follow along with me? I will demonstrate the first pass first so that you can see what it looks like. And then we'll do three more after that. Does that sound good? All right. So we're gonna start on the body, on the inside of the arm. So it goes body to fingers. And then we flip our hand over and we go fingers to face. And we do the other side of the body, body to fingers, flip it over, fingers to face. Now we go face and to feet, all the way to the toes, out the toes, and toes up to set front of your body, to the, for your, to your body, upper body. 
Okay, you ready? You have any questions? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Body to fingers, flip your hand over, fingers to face. Body to fingers inside, flip it over, fingers to face. Face to feet, push it down, catch it all the way to your toes, and then your toes to your body. Body to fingers, flip it over, fingers to face. Body to fingers, fingers to face. Face to feet down the side of your body and toes to your body. One more time, body to fingers, flip it over, fingers to face. Body to fingers, on the inside, flip it over, fingers to face. Down the front of the body, face to feet or toes, and toes up, body. Now the central meridian starts at the pubic bone up to the bottom lip, and we do this a couple of times. And we also do the governing, which is at the tailbone, and you flip it up and over and catch it, and it ends here. So it's here, flip, catch, and ends here. One more time. Here, flip, catch, and over to here. And I like doing it one more time. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Surely central meridian only goes to here, but there are some people who just go, wow, which is, I, yeah. <laughs> it's fine from an energy perspective. All right, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna put the link in the chat. And um, it looks like we've got some questions or comments, awesome. And there you go. So when you go to that link, you can put your name in and then you'll get a page that has thank you and instant access to a download and a video. And it's me doing some things and you might find it humorous. You might find it insulting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to apologize up front. I'm looking at it as being funny. So <laughs> enjoy it. And the Meridian matrix itself is literally a grid that has all the meridians and all their qualities on it. So enjoy that gift from me. Are there any questions or you, do you need any more information? I think that my time is up. I'm not sure. And if not, I have some more things I can say. <laughs> like, we like, do have about uh, eight more, uh, 10 more minutes. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna, if, if I can share my screen. So why do you want to have balanced meridians? You want to balance your, your meridians for more physical and mental stamina. You want to balance your energy for better posture and quicker recovery from injury. As I said, I'm a testament to that. I had back surgery when I was 20 and I had lingering issues afterwards. And it wasn't until I had balanced my energy and balanced some opposing muscles that my pain went away for good, like really for good. Uh, balanced energy, better muscle function between opposing muscles, which I just explained. And balanced energy facilitates better health and vitality. And I have to skip through a whole bunch of these till I get to the end to slide number 36, not yet. Oh, there it is. I love this slide. <laughs> the conclusion of balancing energy and, and the Meridian Magic Play Shop, actually, the conclusion is that when, when your energy flows, your pain slows or goes. And the other thing is when energy slows, pain grows. So if you're in pain, then you can look to two things. The energy is sluggish or there's too much energy in it. Basically it's unbalanced energy that will cause pain over energy in particular. So how you get rid of the energy is not necessarily a secret, but you can flush it just like I described, as long as you know where the, the meridians are. And a really, really good reference for meridians is called Touch for Health, the Complete Edition by Dr. John Thee and Matthew Thee. Uh, all the information about meridians I learned from In Touch for Health 
And having that really thick, beautiful book is a really good reference material and it's very detailed. So um, meridians are magical. When they're balanced, you feel wonderful. You have lots of energy, vitality. You can bounce back from a long walk or a hike or physical exertion faster or mental exertion faster. And when you have balanced meridians, um, you will just, you'll, you'll actually have better focus and concentration in the long run. So to recap, what we learned was that meridians run in one direction and that your brain may be telling you that it's going in the other direction. And the way you correct that is with switching on your brain, um, power on the brain this way, this way, and this way, 10 seconds each, you switch hands and you do the central meridian up, 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 zip up, touch for health calls it zip up and you drink your water. And then um, for acute pain, you can trace the meridians backwards. Again, um, we don't have enough time to go through all the meridians, but you get the gist of it, body to finger, finger to face, face to feet, feet to body. And then there's points on each toe and finger and face and body that they end, begin and end on. Um, and I'm just, I think, is that, is that it really? I actually motored through that and, um, that was fun. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Do you want me to review anything that I've done already? Because those are really the three techniques that I'm the just, I wonder if I can ask, can you show us how you do the muscle testing? Cause I know there's a lot of different approaches. Is that something simple you could share? Yes. It's very simple as when your when your body's, when your, your energy is uh, aligned and balanced with water and those techniques, this is how I do it. I, uh, I just ask, uh, I ask, please show me a yes. And please show me a no. And then my name is Heather and my name, oh, my name is Sylvia. No, my name is Heather. I always end with a yes response. That's how I do it from a body pendulum perspective. From a hand mode perspective, I use uh, my opponent's pollicis longus muscle test in here. My intention is to get a yes, no response, not to be testing the spleen meridian, please. So I say yes, I say no. I say yes, I say no. My name is Heather. My name is Sylvia. My name is Heather. My name is Sylvia. So that's one. And the other one, I just push down on my finger. And But I like the body pendulum because I have two free hands. And I can just, I can do that. So um, yeah, so you can check in with your meridians in the, in the play shop when I have two hours with people, we actually go through the exercise to find out which meridian has more energy than the rest. And then we balance it. It's just too much. It's, it's just, there's a lot of information about meridians. And so I hope I hit the high points for you and um, you got some relief. So when you look, when you feel in your body now, do you feel do you feel less pain? Do you feel more comfortable? Do you feel more energy? Do you, I mean, it is late, it is later at night, but do you have some spark? Sarah sparks. <laughs> Always baby. <laughs> right. right? Just and then like also the other thing about balancing meridians is that if you have the flu or you've got something like that and you have a balanced meridian, you'll throw up right away because you're balanced and then it'll be done. It's like your body will put you into a balanced position. Um, the other thing about it is that if you're really fatigued, do the meridian massage. It'll help a lot. Uh, if you're feeling a little bit out of focus and concentration, do these, these uh, switch on buttons and do the zip up. It's just, they're just really simple energy techniques, but energy is everything. And I wish you well in learning about meridians and how they flow and really learning them so you can affect them positively and make them work for you. Because when you have balanced energy, your physical well being is better. Oh, one more thing about meridian balance. If you have a particular pattern of imbalance in your meridian system over decades, you will develop disease. It happens in the energy field first. 
and then it happens physically. So if you have techniques that you can balance your energy, you'll, it's actually prevention for physical uh, well-being. It's a prevention for, hmm, it's a support for physical well-being. <laughs> That's what I want. It's a, it's a support for physical well-being. And I invite everybody to learn about meridians because it's actually fun and it feels good. Thank you so much, Heather. That was so informational. And we were talking about this on the break, how important it is that we all tune into our bodies, pay more attention. And now you've given us techniques that we can take that even further. So thank you. Um, Gwen, I don't know if we have time for Raphael to do kind of a quick little wrap up. Is that a possibility? Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, voy a compartir en español. Y básicamente, eh, Heather es eh, una uh, licenciada con honores en educación física y completó su tesis sobre equilibrio energético y cómo afecta a los músculos. Es creadora de cursos, autora, oradora, mentora y artista de grabación internacional, director y vicepresidente de Muscle Tunners. Eh, básicamente lo que estábamos entendiendo es cómo balancear tu energía para eliminar, y déjenme eh, las notas que tomé, Mejorar tu postura, eliminar o mejorar el dolor. Básicamente haciendo las técnicas que ella nos acaba de enseñar, todas son por supuesto para que ella las explique específicamente así como lo demostró, pueden ayudarte a tener una mejor postura, a eliminar el dolor o hacer que alivies parte de las cosas que te están sucediendo corporalmente. Eh, más o menos eso resume un poco lo que Heather nos acaba de explicar. Oh, muchas gracias. <laughs> awesome. I just before you uh, end, Gwen, I would just like to say a huge thank you to Sarah and Raphael for uh, emceeing. We just had a blast. It was really fun to do it and so fun to be bringing Be Well in Paradise with Spiritual Communities Network. And Heather, I loved your amusement at uh, listening to Raphael's translation. So thank you for being here. This, you, it was awesome. I can't wait to go to your link. Okay, Gwen, thank you. You're amazing. Oh, yeah, thank you, Peggy and Raphael and Sarah for being here in the main room, emceeing and carrying people through the intermissions. Um, do appreciate that immensely. It gave me an opportunity to handle all the IT stuff and pop in over at the lounge to see how things were going and to meet and greet the presenters before they showed up. And I think it was just a wonderful experience all the way around for everybody. I'm seeing thank yous popping up in the chat rooms. Thank you, Nanika, and everybody else who's sending out kudos, appreciated. Um, yeah, we had a great day. I think the even, us doing it in the evening was probably the best thing we've done because it just really put us in a place to catch people after their day out and before they wind down for the evening. So I hope to do this again soon. And, you know, Spiritual Communities Network, you guys, thank you so much for being there and doing everything that you do, the followers and be well in paradise for, you know, partnering with us so often in doing these programs. It's a lot of fun that way too. Our sponsors, Cecilia Compertori and Coach Caroline, both of them helped to um, make this all possible. And I do appreciate that, their support in that. And um, so presenters, people who are here today, people in the future who will be part of it going forward, um, just in, if anybody noticed on the slideshow, we have um, SpiritCon coming up in November. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be more party themed in the main room with events taking place in the breakout room. So it's going to be a little bit different. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I invite everybody back for that as well. And thank you guys. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. <laughs>